Welcome to the Security and Five podcast. I'm Drew, the Binary Blogger. This is a daily show talking about news, tips, and opinions focused on IT and cybersecurity related topics for everyone. I believe we all have some security responsibility, whether it's at your home, school, work, or personal life as we use technology. The more aware you are of the security world around you, the more secure you can be. Thank you for listening. This is Security in Five. Episode 1150 of Security in 5, and today I want to talk about the reason why we do phishing campaigns, why we do phishing examples, why we do security awareness in around to identify red flag emails, because as old as viruses began to spread, there's been an uptick on using office documents to spread malware and ransomware, in this case specifically PowerPoint, uh, PowerPoint files. Now, hackers have been using office documents for going on you know, 10, 20 years because it is generally sent with legitimate emails. You get, at least in the old days before shared, before shared drives and things kind of moved online into the cloud, you would get attachments, usually Word documents, Office documents, Excel, PowerPoints all of the time. And so therefore it was very easy to slip a few malicious ones through the cracks. Well, hackers are beginning to pick those back up again, specifically in PowerPoint PowerPoint attacks over the last several months known as the PPAM attacks because PPAM is a file at- uh, extension for PowerPoint, uh, PPAM or PPAM. And what these files do is contain, much like macros in Excel or in Word, they contain sections of uh, PowerPoint files that you can use legitimately to expand the productivity and the efficiency and do some really other um, expanse robust things with those files but hackers can turn right around and put in malicious code execute malware and deliver ransomware through these files and all they need to do is make a very crafty legitimate looking email attach that file you quickly go through you're going through hundreds of emails you see it you click on it you open up the powerpoint file and by them by then it is too late so by combining the urgency around this as well as uh, the the awareness that it's not only just powerpoint files attacks have also been picking up by using links to uh, microsoft office 365 documents google docs uh, adobe creative cloud uh, and attackers are generally using emails to deliver those malicious files or links to the information. And this is why we do phishing campaigns. This is why your company should do phishing campaigns. And phishing campaigns are that the company simulates a phishing attack, sends you fake emails that are, in a sense, phishing emails to see what the response is to the employment pool to say, okay, well, if, if I send out a phishing campaign to the empl- to the employees, what is my click-through rate? How many people actually opened the email? How many people clicked on the links? How many people opened up the attachments? How many people entered credentials? That sort of thing. And the reason why you do that is to see what the risk is within the company, right? So if you have a 75% failure rate, that's a very serious security risk that needs to be handled quite quickly because your company is at extreme risk at all of the employees uh, uh, entry points. If you have a, a five or ten percent rate, you still have a failure rate. Then you can more easily address that that uh, awareness. And ideally, you want to drive that number to zero. In addition to that, the IT uh, teams need to be aware of these types of attacks to help mitigate and prevent these from happening. To to prevent email systems from even attaching or allowing attachments in emails of office documents. If attachments do come in, have advanced mail systems to take those attachments download them, put them off into a sandbox, um, unzip them, explode them, run them, and scan them to see if they contain malicious code and that before the email is allowed to be delivered to the uh, to the recipient. Take those extensions and put them into a cloud service, which then is virus scanned, and then the user has to go out and download that. Or just flat out don't allow attachments any uh, any longer and make it far more complicated for the attackers to to attack you. And again, those types of steps, you can have security through obscurity, although that necessarily doesn't exist. But what that does is it, it adds extra steps to an attacker's um, uh, ability to, to get into an organization. And again, sometimes in cases like this, where a phishing campaign goes out to you know potentially tens of millions of people or hundreds of thousands of people, whatever, you want all of those to be consistent so their automated bots can go ahead and do that. If you have additional steps, manual processes in between, then um, you are more secure than the guy down the street. And sometimes that's all it takes is to get the the, uh, the hackers to see you or oh, you're too complicated. I'm going to move on and, and keep going to the, to the low hanging fruit of, of it. But in any case, office documents attacks are never going to stop. It really comes down to security awareness in your company 
running phishing campaigns to ensure that awareness is stayed on top and making sure that your IT organizations and your security organizations are aware of these types of attacks across the board and what are the preventive, preventative and mitigated controls that you're going to have in place to prevent these from getting down to the desktop users themselves. And there are a lot of things that you can do to prevent these types of things to get through and make the crack smaller and smaller and smaller so it's a lot harder for those things to fall through. If you don't do those things, good luck to you. Security in 5, be aware, be safe. Thanks for listening. This has been another episode of Security in 5. If you have any questions on today's episode or any suggestions for future content, feel free to drop me a line, reach out to me at Twitter, post a question on the Reddit channel, or go ahead and drop me an email. If you want to continue to support the show, you can head over to the Patreon site. All the links are in the show notes of every episode. And remember, be aware, be safe. Thanks for listening.